Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It, uh, my name is Javier Conti Job, and um, it is a pleasure uh, to be here. And I want to thank Nova Conference and all of you for giving us the opportunity on behalf of my company of presenting what for us is the total solution for e-mobility. Yeah? Now, uh, BYD or Build Your Dreams probably is unknown to many of you. We are very powerful outside of Europe. We are powerful, small print, in Europe. And uh, I would like to spend a few seconds explaining who we are to build credibility, and then we explain what the solution we have. So BYD, as a glance, uh, it's a company very young, was born 25 years ago, with the aim of eliminating the pollution problem in China. So there was a visionary need at the time. So we started making batteries. We have 25 years of experience making batteries. And um, basically, we make all the vehicles that go around the batteries. So that means it's the only manufacturer that instead of having a vehicle and putting a battery in, we have a battery and we put the vehicle in. Also, we have a massive capacity of battery production, our own batteries, which we use in our vehicles, which is rated at 65 gigawatt hours, which is equivalent to 170,000 e-buses every year made by us. Uh, quickly, I think it's relevant to see that uh, the company grew from 10 people to 220,000. And the most critical figure is that there are 31,000 engineers in research and development. Many of them are working with batteries, many of them are working with powered trains, and many of them are just developing vehicles that I will be happy to show you today. In terms of the core activities, um, we have four. Um, definitely electronics, because you don't have an electric vehicle if you don't have electronics behind to control the charger, to control the, the battery, or, um, or even to uh, control the power transfer from uh, wind, windmills and uh, solar panels into, into storage, power storage facilities. We also make vehicles, and finally, we also make uh, trains. <coughs> Excuse me. So, why are we here? There is a big climate crisis. We heard that this morning. We see that um, the CO2 levels have gone very high. Finally, they are being curbed down starting 2015, but it is not enough. And if we reach a fatidic 1.5 degree increase, then we're going to have real problems. We're going to have floodings, cities destroyed, our kids will not have a safe world anymore. So we have to act now. Good news is that uh, many countries are already acting, thanks to the climate summit in 2019. And I am proud to mention that uh, Norway is the one that has the earliest commitment of the ban on fossil fuel vehicles, just in 2025. The other countries you see in the list are coming in 2030, some of them 2040, but they are definitely taking it very seriously. This means that you will not be able to register a car, truck, bus, whatever, forklift, anything that is using fossil fuels in just four years and a half. Also good news is that some countries are eliminating coal. So here having the list that which countries have said they will phase out coal for electricity production. That will have a massive impact. As well as the EU has announced that 25% of their budget will be dedicated to fighting climate change. This is big money. And this is good news. When it comes to how the industry is adapting and adopting uh, act actions to combat climate change, we see that they have a very clear example, which are the electric buses. So electric buses in Europe, now, this is last year, 50% increase in registration. Now, all the tenders which are published are virtually electric or have electric options in their uh, requirements. So we foresee that uh, buses will become a massive amount of CO2 reduction, and it's forecast 1.3 million or more units by 2040. But buses is just one part of the equation. There are many more uh, sectors that consume fossil fuels, 
and are not yet tackled. So the company came with a strategy to solve that. And that strategy was developed in 2015. And we call it the 7 plus 4. Very simple. So the idea is to come up with vehicles that sort of, uh, solve the seven main mainstream products, and we're talking buses or coaches, cars, taxis, trucks, very important. We'll talk about trucks, whether in logistics or in construction or in municipality, which is translated to garbage trucks. These seven vehicles uh, plus four in sectors which are considered untouchable which consume a lot of fossil fuels, but people didn't see a possibility to replace with electricity. But that is not the case. We have uh, harbors, warehouses, and definitely ports, and why not, mining. So the company set up to develop products on those to solve these seven plus four needs, and we have them. Important thing is that a message I want to pass to you today is that this technology exists, these products exist, and they can be purchased today. So we start with something nice, like uh, cars. We make cars. We don't bring them yet to Europe, but... Uh, and this is an example in which uh, we sold, I think, at the end of the year, better than 200,000 electric cars, whether full electric or, or hybrid, plug-in. And, uh, and that makes us probably one of the biggest companies in the world making cars. But cars is one part. Today we're not talking about cars. We're talking mobility in heavy terms. And uh, we have buses. This is what I mentioned. This is becoming the standard, electric buses. Uh, BYD introduced the first bus in 2011, and we have 10 years' experience in making electric buses. So that has allowed us to have a massive lead. So we have, right now, been able to deliver 50,000 electric buses worldwide. And uh, definitely, that gives us a lot of know-how, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's showing. Uh, we are present in a lot of cities in Europe, as you see here. 22 countries are embracing electric buses. That is very good news for the climate. There's more than 100 sitting cities ordering or testing. And at this moment, we have something like 1,200 plus buses orders, which makes uh, uh, BYD probably the number one seller of electric buses in Europe as well, not only worldwide. We are active also in Norway. We are in Norway today, in Trotheim, so we're happy to show that um, Norway is one of our main, most important customers. We have delivered more than 100, delivered or in the process of delivering more than 100 units of electric buses, and we are working very hard to continue this trend. But uh, this trend is already ongoing for the buses. Let's look at other products. Uh, taxis. This is a case of uh, one taxi fleet in, I think it's Singapore, but we have uh, taxi fleets running in Brussels, in London. They are pure electric, just perfect, and the TCO makes them extremely interesting. Also, uh, trucks. We do have e-trucks. Uh, sanitation trucks is just a perfect use for them. These trucks are just making a lot of noise. They just consume. The engine is always on. If you can go electric, you just make uh, the city more livable, and definitely um, heavy engines will be stopped forever. So this is the case, for instance, in, um, in, uh, in, in South America, in, in Brazil, where they got a fleet of more than 300 electric garbage trucks. This is something we can offer in Europe today. Then comes uh, also within uh, trucks a big, massive segment, distribution. City distribution, intercity distribution. Here we have a, a small delivery van, but here we have some heavy big things. Uh, going, so BYD makes trucks electric, going from 7.5 ton, which is perfect for delivering your goods into supermarkets, palletized, let's say, or um, all the way to 16, 26, 31, and 44 ton tractor heads. So that means that Whatever need you have, as long as it is long haul, so whatever need that you have, you need to run 250 kilometers and be able to charge in one hour, one hour and a half, allows you to do four, 500 kilometers with one vehicle that lasts a long time. It lasts, and that's a paradigm change, 
starting between 10 and 5 to 15 years, and in many cases with the same battery. Because the degradation of the battery is depending on the chemistry you use, it's extremely low. So you have one of these vehicles, you keep them for 10, 12 years, just okay, battery stays the same, TCO starts cashing in. So after five years, I mean, it just beats the TCO or the cost of operation of a fossil fuel truck. And uh, by the way, this is so true that the fact that the cities are embracing all over the place without subsidies, electric buses, it reflects the fact that these buses save money. So it's not going green, that's very important. It's not only reducing CO2, it's making the operation more affordable, making the financially intelligent. And that's why electric, the buses have proven, is definitely uh, the way to go. Same thing with the trucks. Also construction trucks, I need to accelerate a little bit. So also, and uh, these are the seven vehicles mainstream, but then we have the four sectors, which is uh, warehousing, in which we can replace diesel forklifts that nowadays uh, lifting eight tons, they had to be diesel or gas. Now we replace them with electric. Airports as well, we're present in a lot of airports and it's a perfect operation, it's around one base. And these vehicles are just perfect to be, uh, even using solar power as Schiphol Airport does. There's more products that we make, like tow trucks to carry your luggage, things like this. Always electric. Then we're going to harbors. That's a major one. You know how many million containers are moved every day with tow yard tractors, which are diesel? They are never switched off. So we have a solution in Los Angeles, uh, um, Airport is being used, sorry, harbor is being used, and this tow tractor is uh, be able to work around 10, 12 hours non-stop, charges very fast, so you can go electric and definitely get massive savings. And the fourth is mining. Also, we have mining trucks. Okay, that's perhaps a little bit to the extreme, but that shows the commitment of our company to make solutions electrified for every need in the market, no matter how unlikely it may seem. Hmm. Now, we went one step ahead, and we developed uh, the monorails. Monorails is a fantastic solution for massive transportation, uh, and it just adds a nice, elegant touch to the cities. Actually, one of the projects has been approved for Brazil. And uh, we have two solutions, a big sky rail, which can transport up to 30,000 persons per, uh, per hour, or the small sky shuttle. In both cases, thinking ahead, well, that's what the future will bring to many cities. Company has invested a tremendous amount of money and years to making these projects uh, available, and they are there for, uh, for the taking. Mm. So before I go into our vision for next year, I just, for the next decade, I would say that these products exist. We can make uh, the ranges that people need. We work in the cold extremely well. We have a lot of buses in the Nordics, hundreds, and uh, temperatures are the same in Sweden, Finland, as in Norway. And um, it's a proven technology which definitely is available, not only in trucks, but uh, also in other sectors. And uh, we just want to show it because some people might think this is not existing. Yes, it exists right here, right now. And China is the example because they have thousands of taxis, thousands of buses, thousands of garbage trucks, all of them already electrified. Why not here? No. So how do we see uh, the next decade? Uh, we think that there's going to be massive changes. Uh, the small cities will need uh, a smart transport because uh, space is going to be more valuable, which means that um, you will have to have more condensed traffic in a, uh, you have to go electric, obviously. And um, no, standard transport will be replaced by e-cycles. We see that every day in whatever form, but that will continue. Car sharing and, uh, very important, microbuses which are on demand. That's coming very strongly. You have small buses, you just tap your application as you, you were calling Uber, and the bus will stop at your door, you step in and you go. This is coming uh, very fast as we speak now. But all these solutions have one thing in common, which is they are all electrical. There's no other way for that type of city intelligent uh, solutions. So uh, 
So intelligent mobility definitely is uh, driverless buses that will come. We prepare for that. We need to know what to do with the uh, drivers, but the driverless bus is coming. And that uh, so city it will be, uh, suffer major changes, but also in uh, transport of goods. In this chart uh, that is made by Bloomberg, we see what is their projection of the take of electric, the market share of electric in the future registrations. And we see that uh, uh, buses is there already, as I said, but um, passenger cars and light commercial go parallel, meaning that uh, in uh, 2025, 10% of all the LCVs will be electric. This is very important because if you consider the market of electric vehicles, transport, meaning trucks of whatever size, you're talking 2.4 million units. If you consider the market of electric buses, it's only 40,000. So the impact in the environment of the electric trucks is going to be tremendous. And uh, I can tell you that uh, the industry is extremely interested in having electric trucks. Extremely. They know the TCO, they know what it can do, they know it opens the doors to transport delivery at night, during the weekends, in uh, days that cities are closed because of pollution. So everybody's interested, but always knowing that TCO makes it affordable. So dependency on subsidies is not a necessity. So what I said before, Nowadays, with, our bat with batteries, not ours, but others, you have 200, 250 kilometers full load of kilos in the cargo. You can do your route, you can ask your driver to stop at the mandatory stop after four hours, use that time to charge, you charge it in one and a half hours, and then you do 250 kilometers more. So that covers 90% or more of what would be the in-city and intercity distribution needs. Hmm? And as I said also before, batteries last for a long time. The electric vehicles last for a long time. How many trains? How, ma how often do they change the trains or the metros? Every 25 years. They don't have wear down. So you can expect the electric truck to last 15, 10 years. And uh, that um, allows you to have a lot of payback from the savings and compensate from a financial point of view the extra cost that you may have to pay when you purchase it. But believe me, your finance manager will say, go ahead, it's good. So, solution from BYD. Integrate these 11 type of vehicles from whatever brand, integrate them in the cities and the transport, and uh, consider perhaps for the future the implementation of SkyRail as a way of uh, having fast distribution of passengers uh, in an elegant way, so to speak, extremely affordable. You don't need to do boring. You don't need to destroy old ruins, and definitely you can do it in very few months. And that's what uh, BYD is doing right now and bringing to the market to help climate change. Hmm? Thank you very much. <laughs>